Royal Glasgow. We were first acquainted uh, way back in 1969 when I was a wee tuchter, a wee lassie for grief, who came here in December 1969 full of hope because I was going to meet Santa and see the Christmas lights. And there were very many other sights I saw that day that had my eyes out on stalks. Men with long hair and big Afghan coats and big shoes. Teddy boys with DAs. All different sorts of folk that for a wee tuchter like me were a breath of fresh air. No, they folk were working hard and yearning for better days hopeful that Scotland would be the country that they knew it should be. But in December 1969, another momentous event took place, and it was this. And it should have been life-changing for Glasgow and for Scotland. It was the discovery by a moco of oil in the waters of Scotland. It should have been transformational for all of us. But I think we know that's not what happened. But that Hogmanay 1969, this wee tuchter, sat behind the couch in her mum and dad's living room, listening to them and their friends. Men with sideburns and brow cream. Women drinking baby sham that thought they were Lulu and Scylla Black. They all sang Flower of Scotland and they dreamt. They dreamt of Stetsons and skyscrapers, and sequins, and success. Because oil had brought them hope for themselves, and for me, and my wee brothers, and all the other bairns on that caravan sighting right across the whole of Scotland. But they folk I met in Glasgow, and they folk that lived beside me in their caravans, they didn't live the rest of their lives in plenty, did they? No, there was no oil fun for them. Ne star oil, ne Stavanger, ne Dallas, and ne Dubai. Instead, the three day week, winners are discontent, the Falklands War, the miners strike, and the riches of our North Sea bankrolled the development of London and Thatcher's Britain. A series of illegal wars, and the abomination on the Clyde. And today, in 2021, you can sit in your eye of in the North Sea and what are you looking at here in Scotland? Food banks, school uniform banks, baby banks, soup kitchens and welfare funds. In Scottish towns, folk I know, folk I grew up with, folk I worked beside, get their cookers and their fridges repossessed because they're too skint to pay for them. And this energy-rich country, where rising gas and electricity prices has no national energy company, and 30 to 40 percent of the people of this rich nation are living hand to mouth in poverty. And half a century after the efforts of Jimmy Reid and Jimmy Early and Sammy Gilmore and the UCS, what have you got? A Scottish government gear away to foreign lands the contracts for the ships you should have been building on the Clyde. And the ghosts of the Glaswegians that I met and the ghosts and the empty chairs of the folk of this country that dreamt for better. They're watching us now. Their bones created this nation and they comprise its soul. Other Scots whose ashes are scattered to the four corners of this world helped to build this world. Some of these immigrants left in fear, but many departed in hopes of finding the promised land. We weren't the eye too wee, too poor, too stupid or too fair. So in Scotland 2021, what are we seeing? Nurses doing extra shifts to make ends meet. Care home workers taking on home caring home helping and cleaning jobs to try to pay their rent and feed their wains. And then we've got the working poor, single adults scrimping because their wages are insultingly low and their bills unnecessarily high. So what's it going to be, Glasgow? What's it going to be, Scotland? 
while thousands of people in this country continue to cringe in embarrassment, shuffling up a queue at a food bank, looking at the ground, trying to pretend they're invisible. Reduced to charitable handouts of pot noodles and pasta, tin tomatoes and nappies. We'll lost Bathgate and Linwood and Methyl and Singer and Timex. And we'll lost our steel and our textile industries. But Scotland's economy is now on an upward trend. The last quarter we went up by 4.7%. So the problem in this country isn't a lack of wealth or a lack of potential. It's a lack of political will to improve the lot of the majority of the people of this country. Because by dint of birth or happenstance, we are not all created equal and we don't all get the chances that I got. But we need in this country today a government which will deliver equality by eradicating the greatest driver of inequality in this land, which is poverty. And we need that government now, with all the economic levers of power, no another mandate and no another dangled carrot. And the ghosts of John McLean and Matt McGinn and Jimmy Reid and Mary Barber and Margot MacDonald and the spirit of Alice Sheridan. I and Ian. The men and women of the shipyards and the jeans factories and the woolen mills and the mines and the pits and the steel fabrication yards. Do you think they're looking at you the now and telling you, hold your wheesht, hold on for another couple of years. Watch Mary, your neighbours hunger and your bairns fail as billions are poured into bombs and wars and PPE for cronies, tax breaks for the richest and loopholes for wastrels and spivs and tyrants. Or a gravy train of Scots getting comfy in Westminster who need a kick up the arse daily to remind them, as Neil said, they went down there to settle up, no down. And we can't guarantee what a future in an independent Scotland's going to look like, but we can tell you what it's going to look like if we're no independent. Mere hunger, mere want, mere austerity. And Trident and its successor. So my relationship with Glasgow that began in 1969 reached its pinnacle on the 17th of September 2014 when we danced and we sang in this very square full of hope that on the following day we would see the end of Westminster's grip on Scotland. Their hold on our oil would evaporate and all of our resources would become ours. And we nearly did it then because we were not fear. Let's ensure that by this time next year, 2022, we're celebrating the restoration of our country's freedom and end to hunger, waste and unnecessary waste of hope. A new dawn when we take our futures back into our own hands and we release the might of this country and the power of its greatest untapped resource, the power of the people of Scotland. Hope over fear. Abba